So, Tim, what are you drinking today? <laughs> <laughs> well, I am drinking a new Belgium, Abbey Belgian-style double tonight. It is quite refreshing on a nice summer evening here in the Northwest. Both of us are, as you can see. Um, we've had a few already, so I don't know if you can tell, but we're really far into this. However, this is the first time I've had this, and uh, I had to Google the pronunciation which apparently has multiple ways of saying it, but... Yeah, we just went the American way and we're saying double. Double. It's easier. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. I'll drink to the double and easier. So, Eddie, what are your thoughts on electric vehicles today? <sighs> well, let me say this. Um, I think most of them are ugly. And that's... that's <laughs> I wholeheartedly <laughs> agree with you on that. Um, so th that's a question I have for everybody out there and, and you. Why is it that car manufacturers feel the need to build these electric vehicles and make them so damn ugly? The car that comes to mind initially is the Nissan Leaf. I mean, there's there's no reason for it. I get it. It's an econo box. But really? I mean... You can't really call it an econo box, man. I mean, the MSRP on it, especially with options... Gets up there. It's it's way above of an econo box class. So you can't really and that and that's I think that's actually the point that we're trying to drive here. You know, EV cars are expensive. And even even the low end ones like a Kia Soul are still up there in the, you know, thirty thousand dollar range. So why? Why do they have to be so damn ugly? So have you priced a Corolla lately? Would you consider a Corolla an Econo box? Well, I mean, it has matured. Mm -hmm. You know, when 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 Toyota and I and I don't know that this is still relevant, but when they created, you know, the the likes of the Yaris and things like that, they were trying to replace what the Corolla used to be back in the day, right? And you know, we we have options out there that are in the same class that are way more expensive. So I know everything's relative. Yeah, but. Even with this Excuse relativity taken, uh, being taken into consideration, I still think that in the price range that most EVs are, they could have done a little bit better job with the styling. And, and, and I think that's probably the main reason why a lot of people haven't switched over. You know, the, the price alone isn't the, the, the issue here. It's the fact that they're not vehicles that you can own and actually feel proud of. I, honestly, I, yeah. I, I couldn't be seen driving a, a, a first generation Leaf. So my personal opinion, is I think these manufacturers are intentionally making their EV vehicles, it's kind of redundant, right? Electric vehicles. I think they're uh, intentionally making them kind of bland so they don't cut into the sales of their gas counterparts, right? Mm -hmm. Like the BMW i3, uh, it's like a smart car, but I'll say even though. worse. Be before you go on, because I know yeah. this is probably going to be a, a lengthy, <laughs> lengthy discussion about it. I'm going to need more beer. Yes, I, I, I think I will too. I, uh, EV right now, it's kind of, uh, it triggers me. <laughs> but um, I have driven an i3. And yeah. yes, the styling could be a little bit better, but but I get that car. Uh, it actually drives, like I said, I've driven other vehicles. I drove yeah. a Model S. Um, and, you know, you can't compare it to a Model S. But... I get it. I get the car. They did it. I think from an engineering perspective, it was actually well done. Um, so, you've driven the car. I have driven. Why, the why car. don't you give us your thirty-second thoughts on the car? Well, um, I think it handles amazingly, and I was so completely surprised. Uh, the car has super skinny tires. I don't even know what the size are, like one sixty-five <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, they're I, ridiculous. It's skinny. Yeah. They look like like the rear tire of a of a motorcycle, basically, but. Um, I think my motorcycle has wider tires. Probably does. 180. So, <laughs> but I was actually highly impressed, and the the one that I drove had a, uh, a range extender motor in it. Okay. It's a little bit more heft to it. Engine. Engine. I'm. I, it's okay. I'm sorry. He he gets triggered when you say engine, or don't say engine. Say motor when you're referring to a gasoline, internal combustion. So that rem engine. That reminds me. Engine motor. Engine burns a fuel. 
diesel, gasoline, whatever. E85, propane, engine, combustion, motor, electric. Carry on. All right. Duly noted. Yeah. So <laughs> it had a range extender engine. In yeah. It. Uh, regardless of engine, motor, whatnot, it added a little bit of weight, which uh, uh, I don't know if it contributed to the feel of it being a little bit more planted. Uh, I've never driven one without the range extender. Uh, but the bottom line is, I get it. Um, I don't see that being the same case with other EV vehicles. Uh, there is a, a Mitsubishi offering. Uh, I can't remember what the name of it is because it is very forgettable, but it's so ugly. Uh, I, we're not even going to... I just want to say Pajaro just because it's fun to say. <laughs> <Pajaro>. <laughs> All right. So normally... It's not a Pajaro. <laughs> this is where we're going to show you a picture of something, but... Maybe we'll find it. Maybe we will. No, no, we'll skip that one. <laughs> We're not going to show it. It's, uh, it's, it's really quite ugly. Um, and then the Leaf is just such a strange looking car and it didn't have to be that way. Yeah. Um, here's the thing. There are two vehicles that were made by other mainstream manufacturers that they reuse an existing platform for. The Ford Focus Electric and the e-Golf. I mean, if Volkswagen and Ford can pull it off, everybody else should be able to, right? At least that's what I think. You don't think? I think they could. Yeah. All right, so we agree on something. Yeah, for once. So <laughs> we actually agree on a lot of things, but <laughs> here's the thing. There is one car that has completely, once I became aware of its existence, completely ruined EVs for me. And I know this car is not going to be attainable for mundane people like us. And, and the majority of the viewers out there. Exactly. Uh, you know, I'm not trying to judge or anything, but... But I am. The Lotus Evaya. That car has completely ruined EVs for me. Yeah, it's um, at the rather stratospheric price of 1.7 1. 1. 7 million pounds. So what's that, about 3 million US dollars? No. no? Like 2.3 maybe, 2.2. Dude, our dollar is strong right now. I'll flash something on the screen. Yeah, we'll do the real math. <laughs> we're, we're probably both wrong anyways. So, um, yeah, it's it's a beautiful car. Um, again, we'll, we'll put some pictures up for you. but And we'll leave them there for a little while so yeah. you don't have to pause. 2,000 horsepower and 1,250 pound-feet of torque. All-wheel drive. I mean, this thing's going to be insane. And it, and it weighs something like... 3,700 pounds. A little heavy. Yeah, it's it's on the heavy side, but as far as car. EVs are concerned, right. it's not it's right super up. heavy, but it, uh, it's a Lotus, so by Lotus standards, it's very heavy. Yeah. It's a pig. Yeah, that's a good point. Shall I call it Bertha? T please. Let's, let's not talk about my grandma <laughs> this time around. <laughs> May she rest in peace. Uh, very fine lady. Um, well, here's... You, you, you hit a good point. So, yes, we know. This is a ridiculous notion. This car... We can't afford it. Uh, perhaps many of you won't. Again, no judgment. But this is what happens when a manufacturer has absolutely no restrictions when they're designing a, an EV. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to say EV from now on without adding cars or, or, or vehicles at the end because it's redundant. So, But this car was Lotus saying, you know what? We're looking at the competition. We're looking at everybody building EVs right now. And all of them are setting themselves restrictions in their parameters. We're not going to set any restrictions. We're going to create a prototype and we're going to create a, a concept. And essentially, we're going to do exactly what we want to do with this. Mm -hmm. With no financial restrictions, with no um, governing sort of rules. And this car has, I mean, the, 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 the performance specs of it are just insane. They're, they're Bugatti like crushing outside from the top speed, of course, but as far as the acceleration goes, it's insane. It's faster than at, at, at zero to 300 kilometers per hour, which is 186 miles per hour in what, like under nine seconds? Less than nine seconds is what they're claiming, right? Yeah. And then zero to 60 and under three. Right. So well, absolutely uh, insane numbers. It is, yeah. it is. It's, it's almost silly, right? Mm -hmm. So to sort of end my point here, all of that with a beautiful design. I mean, this car is is gorgeous. And it is a brand new design by Lotus. This is not based on any yeah. other platform. It's not an Evora. It's not a, an Exige. It's not, you know, anything that they've actually built before. It's brand new. Everything, all about it is brand new. So I know it's up there in the clouds right now, but it has ruined EVs for me because 
if they can pull it off, if they can make this look that beautiful, why can't other manufacturers like work on the styling a little bit better? Yeah. You know? Yeah, there, there's no reason for it. I mean, we can continue on and on and on for this for hours, but long and short is, come on, manufacturers, make a good looking electrical vehicle. Or you know? reuse existing platforms. Yeah. You yeah. know, you want to sell a Corolla EV? Hey, I'm on board. Hey, there's rumors that the Mustang's going to go EV. Oh, or they're going to make an electric version of it. I don't know what. Or maybe a hybrid. I think I'm going to wait until, if it does happen, I'll wait. Because <laughs> I want to reserve my judgment. How about an electric F-150? Probably have like so, a 15 so I, mile range. No, I, I don't know, man. A truck, dude. It's got actual frame. So I, I think like electric trucks are going to kind of kick ass. Actually, um, you're, you're the right. amount of torque that motors have and, and being instant basically from zero RPM to max RPM, it's just, it's always there. The only thing though is once they're under load, yeah, this translates it, to, you know, actual uh, power usage. Oh well, yeah, yeah. I mean, your range is going to go down from, let's say that they had a theoretical range of 200 miles on a, on a single charge. You're towing 5,000, 6,000 pounds. I think it's going to probably go down by like at least half, if not more. So I would probably take up half of my, <clears throat> um, cargo capacity and put a generator in the back of my bed so I could charge my EV while driving down the road. So basically you're using an internal combustion engine spewing out all sorts of gases and Something's got to make a sound. Those EVs sound like crap. Maybe we can drive it around going... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I mean, uh, trucks might be a good thing. It's not Definitely I wouldn't be in the market for them. Uh, I'm, I'm sure not. A lot of people I, would. I'm nowhere near in the market for an EV. They're just... To me, they're not practical. Um, I do a lot of 500 plus mile trips. Um, trying to get from A to B when you're going 500 miles in a day is a challenge. I know it can be done. Yeah, yeah the Tesla supercharging station, exactly. blah, blah, you blah. Can follow the, the, the path of the but charging station. But where I go, there aren't charging stations out there. So then I got to plug into the house and it's going to take three days to charge it. No, that's an exaggeration. Uh, well, but yeah, you, I mean, it's still going to take a long time on 110. It, it can, right? it can. I mean, for a full charge, if you're doing uh, the, the what they call the convenience chargers, which are the ones that you can just plug into a 120 outlet, 110 outlet, whatever you want to call it, um, they do, on, on something that has that large of a battery, it would take a long time. And, and yeah. that actually kind of brings back what you were talking about, trucks, you know, being, you know, more convenient or having more utility, being electric. Mm -hmm. I mean, where are they going to be used the most? out on work sites, right? Yeah. You know, you, yeah, you're, not gonna, you're not going to always have that convenience. So I, I think the electric cars are super convenient for people who live or near a major city, right? When you're just commuting back and forth and you can plug in at night, great. But if you want to make a road trip, you have to revert to a gas car. And again, I know there's Tesla lovers out there and whatnot, and hey, they've driven across country. Yeah, that's fine. But your eight-hour trip turns into a 12 to 14-hour trip because you have to stop and get gas. <laughs> right. Well, and... and uh, Electricity. I, I hope this doesn't turn into a, you know, us being short-sighted and not realizing no, no, that this I, is the way of the future, but... I like electric vehicles. So don't get me wrong. I know I'm ragging on them. I like them. For me, right now, they're not ready for prime time. That's the point right there. Yeah. It's, uh, I, I think that, you know, when you ask me the question about it, I don't think in terms of the future right now. I think of of the near future. Like sure, that's fair. Where are they at right now? And and I think, you know, it, there might be differing opinions about what is actually causing them to not have the adoption rate that they should be having by now. Yeah. I think a major one is styling. I mean, the manufacturers are plain and simple, just not spending the time mm -hmm. trying to uh, either reuse an existing platform that people already mm -hmm. like and purchase, or creating a platform that actually looks like something that people would want. I mean, uh, Chevy, after the the Volt, V-O-L-T, uh, which was a plug-in. Was plug that Victor or Bravo? That was Victor. Victor. Uh, that's right. I, I said <laughs> V-O-L-T. That doesn't really <laughs> solve the problem. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Victor, Oscar, Larry, Tom? Lima. Whatever. <laughs> it was, um, it, you know, it was a plug-in hybrid. Uh, I think it was successful, you know, for at least for the targets that, that mm. GM had set. It was a successful car. I, I, I've seen many on the road. I saw many on the road when it first came out. And uh, they were definitely 
uh, sought after when they were being um, uh, placed in dealerships and whatnot. Yeah. But they went from that to suddenly working on the on the Bolt, and when they released the Bolt, the B as in boy, Bravo, L T, yeah, Bravo, <laughs> Oscar, <laughs> Lima, Tom. Uh, they've, they, they, in my opinion, they from a styling perspective, they went backwards. Instead of oh, actually God. evolving the V O L T Victor, they basically it, created a basically a mainstream little okay. hatch thing. A Eddie told me I need to use more emotional words, so I'm gonna say the new Bolt with the B looks like a truncated suppository. How's that for emotion? I think that's perfect. That's a perfect. <laughs> Oh, even the interior looks like if, <laughs> like the interior looks like what I imagine a suppository looking like if you just split it in half and you looked inside. That's what the interior looks and like. And how does it taste? I've never tasted a suppository. Yeah. On that note, I need to refill my beer. So we're going to take a break and we'll be right back. So I got my beer through the magic of video and science. Here it is. Yeah. It's good Here. stuff. Oh, I'm happy. Yep. A lot colder, too. That's what happens when you take it straight out of the fridge. I know. Yeah. Nursing the beer is never good. So, but uh, yeah, continuing our topic on EVs, even though it's not really, as you can tell, it's not, we're, we're not quite there yet. We, we're not accepting as uh, many other people are, but uh, I thought there was something that we needed to bring up to kind of uplift. Yeah. The topic a little bit. Yeah. And that is the Porsche Taycan. Yep. And that is a little bit more attainable. I, I don't think it's going to be attainable not, to... Not, not to me. Not to me. <laughs> not right now. But uh, compared to the Lotus, it, it is a bargain, right? And uh, mind you, it's not going to be at the same level of performance. However, it does have some really amazing performance stats. But what Porsche is touting the most is the what they call the repeatability, which is essentially saying, hey, you use our launch control system to do zero to, what is it, uh, 200 kilometers per hour? Yeah. In however many seconds it is? I think it was, um, I'm going to have to put facts in here. It'll I be up remember. here. So just pretend we're saying it. I think it was under 10 seconds. Yeah, I think that sounds about right. Yeah. So um, just pretend like we said it, it'll be up here. Yeah. So, but they are touting the repeatability. Yeah, and so the repeatability, as we know, and a lot of people do know, and may or may not know, Porsche really pushes home the fact that you can use launch control over and over and over on their cars. And they build them to be durable enough to prevent it from breaking, mm -hmm. unlike <coughs> Nissan. But, um, yeah, so they've done this, and they said... We'll give you this, but... It'll void your warranty if you use it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But with the Taycan, 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 Taycan. Taycan. We're trying to be. Excited. They have launched it zero to two hundred kilometers per hour twenty six times in a row, and the variation between the fastest and the slowest was 0. 0.8 seconds. 0. 0.8 of a second, or 0. 0.8 seconds. 0. 0.8 seconds. Eight hundredths of a second. Eight tenths of a second. Eight tenths of a second. So that's so pretty amazing, you know. Conversely. The Teslas, when you launch those, I don't know how many times you can do them, but in ludicrous mode. I can't pronounce this. So. Ludicrous. So on those, <laughs> when you launch those bad boys, you know it, it gives this claimer. This may you know damage your motors, wear out your motors you know, faster, your batteries faster, or something along those lines. Basically, I don't they don't have the that verbiage. That yeah, is. yeah. And not only that. There's no way if you launch a Tesla 26 times in a row, and I would love for someone to prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. I want to see this. Someone who owns a Tesla, go out there and launch it 26 times in a row. Use a V-Box mm -hmm. and see if you can get it within eight tenths of a second between the fastest and the slowest after your 26th launch. I mean, there's there's Not many factors. Happen. There's many factors that would... It's going to limp. Yeah, I mean, uh, overheating, the, the, the motors overheat, Maybe the batteries themselves. Um, the other thing is, which is probably the, the the most obvious, the components are just not built to be to sustain that that kind of treatment for many repetitions. Yeah. So, you know, uh, it is exciting to see Porsche stepping up and and saying, you know, we're gonna we're gonna take the technology that we learned from the uh, what is it, nine eighteen 
uh, spider. The 918, yeah, yeah. Yep. And we're going to start trickling that down into our other uh, vehicles in the lineup. And yeah, you're not going to build a 918 spider in every car. But what you do is you take what you learn and you build it into something that is actually usable every day and reliable, which is the important part. So, uh, you know, they're using the repeatability. I think that they're trying to stray away from using the word reliability or, or something that is a little bit more mainstream because uh, for one, it gives it gives the actual correct uh, notion that you can do this over and over and over again, right? That's one. And, and, and also in a metric uh, fashion where you can actually measure, hey, there's no changes or there's virtually no changes between the, the, the repetitions. But the other one is, um, it, it, it sets, it's almost like setting up a new uh, benchmark or a baseline for, for other manufacturers to, to try and, and uh, do the same thing. And I hope they do. So, so what you're saying is Porsche's over there in their corner going. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. I mean, okay. I wouldn't say it that way. I don't think Porsche is that cheesy, but. Um, <laughs> I mean, um, I, I think they would do it more in a, in a kind of a German way, which would be more serious. They would just look at the other manufacturers and be like. That would be the Porsche way. They, they don't have any. They, they have nothing to prove, right? They do something. They say, hey, we're going to do this this way. And, and then they tell the manufacturers, okay, if you, if you guys want to repeat it, that's cool too. Um, you know, same thing they, they've done over and over where they've been trying to beat the uh, Nürburgring. Nürburgring? Did yeah, I pronounce Nürburgring, that yeah. Yeah, Nürburgring, 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 yeah. Nürburgring, yeah. Yeah, with their halo cars, you know, mm -hmm. like the GT2. Well, I don't the, the know. The 918. The 918, yeah. It's the, the hybrid record holder. There you go. And then what happens is all the manufacturers basically just take on from that and try to beat that record. So it's almost like every manufacturer is trying to beat not necessarily the Nürburgring record, but the Porsche Nürburgring record for each class of car. And Which I think it belongs to Porsche anyway for every yeah. class, basically. I think I, there was a period of <laughs> the, time... I, I'm, I'm probably yeah. wrong. It, well, what happens is this. Porsche breaks a record, right? Or sets a record, I should say. And then manufacturers basically say, okay, we're going to build a car that's going to, you know, break that record and they do it right yeah. it's, but it's after it's always after the fact and then Porsche goes out okay well, well we'll just bump it up a notch and they do so right now with the Taycan the bottom line is there is a second thing that I think is the main reason why people aren't buying into EVs today and that's reliability and not necessarily that they break uh, down a lot and I'm gonna add one more yeah longevity Right, right, longevity. So, so I used the wrong term. I actually, I actually meant to say longevity. Okay. I, I don't think reliability was the right word because, uh, to be honest, I don't think EVs right now are really unreliable. Yeah, I, I think an EV in and of itself, just by its nature, would actually be relatively reliable. Low maintenance. Yeah, I mean, there's no oil to change. There's, I mean, I think no really there, there, there's probably, I, I don't know, I don't own one, obviously, but there's probably... Um, like some Zerk fittings that need to be greased, like on the suspension and various parts like that. U joint right? boots, the you know the braking system obviously needs to be uh, maintained at some point. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Things like I mean, that. Your typical wear items, right? Right. But well, not necessarily typical because typical would be like clutch replacing well, the the transmission fluid. You know, trying replacing the. Let me rephrase. Like typical wear items that are not related to an engine drivetrain. Right. So no engine, no transmission. But I think it sounds like the Lotus Avaya. Is that what it was? Avaya? Avaya. I think that's how it's pronounced. Avaya. E V I J A. Um, I think that actually has transmission or transmissions is what I heard in their uh, so it's like not press release thing. No. Okay. I think I think it's geared and I think that's part of the reason why oh we didn't mention this. Has a top speed of over 200 miles per hour. So that's how they're able to attain these numbers, yes. right? Zero to 60 under three and a top speed of over 200. Because typically a motor, I mean, they can spin fast, but they still, when it's direct drive, they only spin so fast, right? right before right. They, they run out of juice. Um, steam, if you will. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So coal powered. But going back, <laughs> <laughs> the next, uh, the, the reason, which, you know, you use the, the right word, longevity. Uh, People buy into an EV car right now, and three years down the road, not only does the technology like, you know, evolve to the point where your EV car from three years ago seems almost archaic in nature, but the 
and, and, and this is probably mostly uh, not due to battery technology, because the battery technology hasn't really advanced that much in the last three or four years. That's but, the part that but the concerns implement, me. Yeah. yeah, but the implementation itself of it, yeah. right? Uh, the, the, the cars will have uh, more features and things like that, but um, the battery will eventually need to be replaced, right? And, and, yep. and that is an expense, and I know they're going down in, in cost, but it is still an expense, and it's something that's going to be in the back of the minds of everybody. It, it would be like if you bought a car, like a normal combustion, uh, internal combustion engine, on the same motor, and you knew that eight years down the road you had to replace the engine on it. Yeah. Regardless, I mean, it's not. It's not because you're. You'd not... think twice about it. Yeah, exactly. We you're... should talk to our friends in Japan and how they feel about that because they have to replace them. What is it? Forty thousand miles, or else. No, or I don't think it's mileage. There, there, there's there's a major. There's a major. My understanding, and, and yeah. it could be wrong. I, you know, things have may, may have changed. Um, my understanding is once you get to like that 40,000 mile mark, they tax the hell out of you. Okay, so that's just so a Japan thing. Japan. Okay, I, yeah. I wasn't aware of And that. that's why we can buy Japanese engines here on the cheap, and they're usually 40,000 miles or less. Got it, okay. Because they're yanked sense. out and they replace them. That makes sense. I, I, I always wonder why, because when yeah. I see crate engines on, on eBay and things like that, they always seem to have about the same... JDM engine, 40,000 yeah, 40, miles, miles, give or take. Yeah, yeah that's why. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, so uh, in in the in the sense of EVs, I don't know if that's applicable or not because that might be like an emissions thing. Maybe after forty thousand yeah. miles, they think. Yeah, I, mean, I think it's an emissions thing, and then they tax the hell out of you because of it, right? So right. they want to keep those emissions levels down. Okay. But it's kind of ridiculous because modern engines are running two hundred thousand miles, and they're not burning oil or no. very and, little, and the emissions are still clean. And they're exponentially cleaner. Yeah. I mean, it's not just cleaner; they're exponentially yeah. cleaner than, than older engines. So, um, as far as the EV is concerned. Batteries? That concerns me. Um, well, yeah, I mean, and that's what I was getting at. Like, uh, real quick, to just to, to finish my statement. Yeah. So, if if you're buying an EV, I mean, the EVs are expensive as it is. Even the the the, the low uh, end ones are in the twenty five thirty thousand dollar range, right? Leaf. The Leaf, the the E Golf, the um, actually the E Golf is close to forty grand, I think. The Mitsubishi, not Pajaro. We're not talking about that car. We're not even showing a picture <laughs> of that. I'm gonna so, show a picture of it. <laughs> But the uh, what I was going to say is, you go in, you buy this thing, and, and you already have that in the back of your mind that that car will need a battery replacement at some point, which yep. may or may not be expensive by the time you have to do it. Probably will be. So you see a lot of them three years, five years probably at most down the road, uh, essentially getting offloaded. And and when you're buying a used one, you will be stuck with that change a lot sooner. So the the prices of used ones are ridiculously like lower than than when you buy them brand new you know more so than yeah. than a regular car yeah and, and i think they're taking that into account right yeah. but so i i think i've read something about teslas that are hundred thousand i think there might even be some out there closer to two hundred thousand miles wow okay. and they're still on their factory battery so i think the capacity reduction is like 80% from stock on the high miles. Which if you have like a P100, that's still a lot of battery. That's a lot of battery yeah. life, right? Um, so what is that? We'll call it 20%. We'll just say 300 miles. So you're losing 60 miles. It's 240 miles range, mm -hmm. right? Basically, your car goes down to being a P85. or P80. Yeah. and Heavier, but... And I'm going to admit this. I've actually considered buying a used Tesla for commuting purposes. I mean, uh, it's, there's nothing wrong with that. I admit it. I mean, Tesla, the only thing I, <laughs> this is the only thing that I don't like about Tesla right, right now is that they have a very closed ecosystem with their yeah. vehicles. And, you know, it, it, when you buy a used one, you're still technically kind of buying it from Tesla because that mm. vehicle has to be completely recertified or whatever certified. Yeah. Yeah. And does it? Well, I don't know about cert recertified, but, but you're still, I mean, the vehicle for it to function, like it's, it's almost all software, right? And you're registering it back with Tesla. Fair. And you're, you know, so. But I mean, you can buy it from a private seller. Yeah, I think I've it seen... It doesn't have to go through the Tesla dealer pretty sure network. I've seen one or two for sale that were not directly from, you know, being used. Okay, yeah, like Craigslist, I, I've seen a couple. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, all of that to say that we're not ready for EVs. And it's because they're ugly. <laughs> 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 That's the key driver here. They're Fucking hideous. Hey man, I, I'm, I was trying to avoid bleeping this conversation, and now you've kind of messed it up. You know what, Eddie? What? F you. Cheers. <laughs>